Hello everyone. Welcome to VLearnX episode 001. I am Jim Cathode. With me, we have our expert in science and technology, the intelligent and always smiling Tiffany Spectrum. Thank you, Jim. Hello everyone. Tiffany, what do you have for us today? I was thinking of starting with deep learning. But then I remembered what you said earlier, that we need something simple to start with. So I have selected a simple topic today. It is about making musical sounds using Python. Does it mean we are going to make music today? Not yet. Today, we will only look at a basic approach in synthesizing musical sounds. Making music is for another day. Fine, we can wait. Please continue. Let me connect my computer to the display. It may take a few seconds. Here is the plan for today's session. It is important that you have experience with Python and NumPy. Otherwise, this session will be difficult to follow. When you say experience, how much of it is required? Just enough experience to read and understand the code should be more than enough. We are not dealing with anything complicated in this session. These are the topics for today. We will start with pure tones. Then we will apply several envelopes to it. After that, we will add several such waveforms to produce more complex sounds. Now, let me take you through the script I wrote. Is that a disclaimer? Yes. I just wanted to say that these are ideas I learned by exploring various papers and online sources. I am not presenting anything new here. Also note that I am not an expert in music theory. Okay, that is expected. This is the main function that handles the functionality of this script. Currently, it calls a function named just sine wave. That function is defined here. As the name suggests, it is a function to produce a pure sine wave. These two are the key variables. First one decides the frequency of the wave and the second one decides the duration. This function generates the sine wave. Here, we call the sine function provided by the NumPy library. After that, it returns the output as a float32 array. Finally, we save that array as a WAV file named output.wave. Let's run this script. The script completed without errors. Let's look at the output file. We are using the open source program Audacity to play and analyze the audio. As we can see, it is a pure sine wave. Let's have a look at the spectrogram of the audio. I have heard of it before. What is that? Spectrogram is a display of frequency content of the audio signal over time. I did not quite understand that. Worry not, let me show you the spectrogram. You will understand once you see it. This is the spectrogram of the audio signal. Time is on the horizontal axis and frequency is on the vertical axis. The color represents the intensity. I understand now. It is like cutting the audio into tiny chunks and showing their spectrum side by side. Exactly. Notice the strong white line at 200 Hz. This corresponds to the pure tone we generated. What does it sound like? It sounds like this. Could you try some other frequency? Sure. This is 400 Hertz. <laughs> 
and this is 800 Hz. We are done with this function. Next we are going to look at a function that is similar to the previous function. The difference is that it produces multiple sine waves of different frequencies in sequence. This is the starting frequency. Our aim is to pick frequencies based on a fixed scaling factor. This is the ratio used for that. Is there any significance to that ratio? Yes. In music, small integer ratios are preferred between frequencies. We will explore more about it in a future session. This is the key part of the function. We generate sine waves and append them to a list. We are also adding a brief silence after every tone. Let's run this script and see what comes out. Notice that we have multiple tones in this file. Could you try a different ratio? Interesting. The frequency steps are clearly larger. Is this how frequencies are selected in music? It depends on the tuning scheme. It is beyond the scope of today's session. We are done with this function. Let's go to the next one. Next we look at different envelopes. These are intensity variations applied to a waveform. Please explain more about that. Sure. Think of plucking a string or hitting a metal glass. The sound intensity initially goes up rapidly and then it slowly fades away. Our aim is to apply that kind of variations to the tone. Here you can see three types of envelopes. We will try them one by one. Let's start with the simplest one. It is a basic ramp up, ramp down envelope. This plot shows the shape of the envelope. This is the function that produced the envelope. We should take a look at the output. This is the spectrogram of the same. Notice the gradual drop in the intensity of frequency components. Next we have the ADSR envelope. ADSR stands for attack, decay, sustain, and release. What are those? Have a look at this plot. You can see the attack, decay, sustain, and release sections of the envelope. But what do they mean? Imagine a keyboard-based synthesizer. Attack and decay sections handle the initial burst of intensity of the sound. This happens immediately when we press a key. After that, the key continues to make sound, but at a lower intensity. This is handled by the sustain part of the envelope. Finally, when we release the key, the release section of the envelope gets active. 
Let's have a quick look at the function. The four sections of the envelope are defined here. We can take a look at the output. I wanted to make it sound similar to the natural envelope of a string sound where the sustain is not flat. In the next envelope, I have added an exponential fading to the sustain part of the envelope. This may not be ideal for a keyboard-based synthesizer, but when generating music using Python code, it should be okay. Here you can see both functions. Notice the difference in the code for sustain part of the envelope. The parameter fade decides the speed of decay during sustain. Let me show you what the generated envelope looks like. Notice the exponential decay instead of a constant value during the sustain part of the envelope. Could you play the generated output? Sure. This sounds much more natural than the previous envelope with a constant sustain value. However, it still sounds very dull. That is because we are using only one frequency component in this case. Sounds produced by real instruments are rich in harmonics. We can mimic that behavior by adding several harmonics. That is exactly what we are going to do next. This is the last function of this session. Here we generate multiple waveforms of different frequencies and concatenate them. After that we stack them together and save it as a single file. It looks very similar to the functions we have seen before. That's right. The difference is with the function that generates the waveforms. Here is the function that produces the waveform. It takes three parameters. Frequency, duration, and volume. Why is it called additive synth? As I mentioned before, this function adds a set of harmonics together to form a better sounding tone. This is called additive synthesis. In that case, is there also a subtractive synthesis? Yes. Subtractive synthesis starts with a complex waveform with several harmonics and use filters to remove the harmonics, in a time-dependent fashion. We will explore this topic in a future session. First step is to select the harmonics to include in the waveform. These two variables control that. Harlem sets the limit and the har jump sets the jump. They are used in the loop head below. There is nothing special about these values. Next we compute the frequency for the harmonic. This is straightforward. Note that each harmonic component is also called a partial. As we have seen before, fade decides the decay of the envelope after the initial decay. What is the motivation behind these values? These values are chosen experimentally. The important thing to remember is that for most instruments, the higher harmonics decay faster than the lower ones. This equation captures that behavior. Next we set the amplitude for each harmonic. Again, why this particular equation for amplitude? As I mentioned before, these values are chosen by trial and error. I could not find any standard for selecting these values. Here you can see how the envelope is calculated. Notice that the duration only affects the sustain part of the envelope. After that, we generate the tone and multiply it with the envelope to form the partial corresponding to the harmonic. 
The next step is to add all these partials together to form a single combined waveform. Notice that all the partials have the same length. As a result, combining them is easy. At the end, we normalize the waveform and apply the volume. Let's take a look at the output. Notice the presence of multiple partials in the signal. As explained before, higher harmonics decay faster and have lower intensity. The waveform we generated produces a sound similar to a metallic bell. It sounds much better. Reminds me of sounds produced by metallic glass filled with water. Could you change the parameters and show us how they affect the sound? Sure. Let me set a constant value for the fade. This will make all the partials decay at the same rate. Interesting. What happens if we use the same amplitude for all the partials? Okay, let me try that. That sounds terrible. Maybe you could change some other parameters? Let me add more harmonics. I was expecting it would sound pleasant with more harmonics. But that did not happen in this case. You are right. It takes a lot of experimentation to get good sounding waveforms. Is it possible to synthesize sounds of real instruments with this approach? For example, the sound of a piano? From what I have explored, real instrument sounds are very hard to achieve with additive synthesis. They will always sound unnatural. We will have to add more and more parameters to improve the sound. Understood. What should we expect for the next episode? We will explore how to map keys to different frequencies. Like keys of a keyboard instrument. After that, if we get time, we will make some music with it. Do you have anything more to add? Yes. The code from today's session will be available in GitHub. That is very nice. I will give the link in the video description. That's it for this episode. Let us know if you have any comments or questions. Thank you for your time.